Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Ma'am Denise Zekhele. Welcome, Ma'am. Thank you, Dad. Uh, Ma'am, can you please share with us how did you become a researcher? So, I was first introduced to research when I joined the university in 2014. I accompanied my then subject to the field to collect data. And he was doing research on communities and heritage sites. So I, threw, I saw through his research the impact it had on rural communities, the interaction of the university with um, rural communities, how much they appreciated that relationship. So I think that is where I realized the importance and impact of research on um, the local people, the normal people who don't have access to facilities and resources that we have at, at university. So from then on, I was inspired to start my master's journey um, up to where I am now. So I would say that was my inspiration, which sparked my interest in research. Thanks a lot, ma'am. And then, what are you currently working on? <clears throat> so currently I'm working on my PhD studies, looking at um, conservation conflicts of rural communities and their surrounding protected areas. So my particular or specific study area is the Golden Gate Highlands National Park with adjacent rural communities that are found here in Kwakwa. So namely villages such as Mumunta, Klatens, Klajane, Udumane, Mabulela, and the likes. Yes. So ma'am, what uh, climate strategic uh, adaptation that you are using to mitigate any effects on those uh, societies and the livelihoods of the communities? <clears throat> so I think I forgot to mention in my previous response that looking at conservation conflicts of these communities and protected areas are also looking at how climate change is changing the environment because climate change is something that we cannot control but at the same time it changes the environment in which we live in. So I am particularly looking at how communities are adapting to climate change through their day-to-day -day activities, because these are farming communities. They also keep livestock, so obviously they feel the impacts, negative impacts of changes in temperature and precipitation in particular. So I adopt their indigenous knowledge and practices to see how they are adapting to the inevitable changes that are happening but also trying to maintain their livelihoods. So I'm looking at what it is that the local people are doing from the indigenous villages to try and survive the harsh um, environmental conditions that we are currently witnessing. Thanks a lot. Man. And then looking at Vision 130, one of the tenants is about uh, the maximum sustainable societal impact and sustainable relationship. So through your work, what contribution are you making to highlight the Vision 130? So, um, with my work, which is mainly scientific based, I bring scientific evidence to show the environmental changes that have occurred over the past 30 years and also the changes in climate in the same time frame. Sorry, so I present these scientific findings to this to the local people in trying to find a way in which we can combine scientific evidence as well as their indigenous practices and try to come up with a solution that is beneficial for both 
the environment and humankind, but also not imposing my scientific ideas on these local people so that sustainable solutions and ideas could sustain um, the same communities that are affected. So because climate change and environmental change is an ongoing process, I feel that through Vision 130, interactions and relationships with our local people is something that we can foresee to happen and take place for, for the longest of time to come. So, in essence, I feel my research would, in the long-term basis, equip our societies to better prepare themselves for the future that is unknown, but which is predicted to be worse than what it is today. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And then, ma'am, are there any Catholic niche area in your field of study? <laughs> I would say um, niche areas would be conservation conflicts because it's a very complicated, complex um, study where in we're trying to protect the environment for future generations but at the same time find people that are living next to protected areas who are also trying to make a living or who needs to survive. So the question is how do we harmonize the two, protect the environment but also still allow people to make a living, to go on with life despite um, the changes that are happening on the ground. So I feel in a way that is a niche, the first niche in particular. The second one would be monitoring these changes in real time. We cannot be using data from 10, 15 years back in order to explain or try to provide solutions for the situation that is happening currently. So ideally, we want to have systems or technology that would monitor real-time changes so that we offer real-time solutions. So according to me, I feel those are the two most important niche areas in this study. Thank you so much, ma'am. And then, when we look at the sustainable development goals, you are talking about uh, climate action. And then you'll find there's a synergy with other goals. For instance, we talk about uh, the clean energy, we look at uh, sustainable communities and cities, and then we look at responsible consumption and production, so what contribution can you make to that scene? Wow, it is a challenging one, particularly for rural people whose main um, source of living is primary activities, but I believe there is a very positive relationship between um, all of those goals where if one is negatively affected then it will have a ripple effect, negative ripple effect onto the other goals. So with my um, contribution, with my research, the contribution would be to target one which is sustainable production and consumption hoping that in turn it will inform our fight against managing our carbon foot emission or carbon, carbon footprint emissions and also adapting to the direct impacts of climate change. So the goal here is to be intentional with one SDG which is sustainable um, consumption and production so that it will ripple effect of try to minimize and dilute the other sustainable goals. I hope that's a contribution at the end of the day that I will realize in our relationship. Thanks a lot for sharing that. And then looking at artificial intelligence, how can it make an impact in your field of study? 
That is a goal to mine, I would say, because in my field, uh, we normally rely on remote sensing and GIS, which are really advanced technologies, which offers data into places that a human human being sometimes would not have access to, but also giving us uh, time and space data, which could date back to as far as the 1970s. So its ability to also provide such high impact data, I feel, um, affords us the opportunity to try and question, but also dissect current um, problems, societal problems in particular, in order to try and come up with solutions to it. Thanks a lot for sharing with us that uh, AI will play a major role in terms of monitoring, uh, planning and decision making. And then, ma'am, what can you say to aspiring young researchers? Hmm. What message can you give? As an aspiring researcher myself, I would say um, the first step is to start. It's important, I think when we are in the lab and in our work stations, we tend to take for granted what we are doing until we get to interact with the communities who benefit from our research. So to aspiring um, young researchers, I would say um, we take the data from those who have walked the journey before us and we should feel proud of standing on the shoulders of giants who have embarked on this journey before because really the development in research now, the technology that is out there has sort of made things a bit easier and more um, accessible. So I feel the starting point would be to just Get on with it. We are doing real work that has been appreciated and makes a difference to so many communities. Thank you for those inspiring words. And then, ma'am, apart from research, what are your other interests? Wow. So, apart from research, I enjoy reading for nature, I enjoy poetry a lot, um, I enjoy being outdoors. So being out in nature, those are my greatest interests. Yes, which I, I enjoy doing whenever I get a chance to. Thank you, ma'am. And then we are grateful for sharing with us and then we wish you all the best. Thank you, know, Thank, you, you. Thank, Thank you for having me and for the great talk. Thanks. Mm -hmm.